Welcome to It's Been How Long, the podcast about Cherry Hill High School East students from the late 1970s and early 80s. This is Kara Siegel. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, welcome uh, to you. It's Been How Long, a uh, podcast about Cherry Hill High School East students from the late 70s, early 80s. Mm -hmm. And today we have uh, Deborah Smead. Welcome, Deborah. Hello. Um, it's been 40 plus years. I know. Isn't that crazy? 43. Well, yeah. Yeah. Since we graduated. Yeah, that is oh that's been unbelievable. So what keeps you busy these days? Well, I uh, am a victim of Silicon Valley layoffs. So as of February, I'm now in forced retirement. Uh, let's put it that way. Uh, layoff, but I just chose to say, okay, fine. I'm retired. I'm not going to look for another job at 60. Yep. And so I've been doing a lot of traveling and um, just took a really big trip to Greece, actually, just got back last week. Nice. And now I get to figure out what I'm going to do with my life and what I'm going to do to keep myself busy. And so what are you retired from? I was a project manager for software companies. I've been doing that since 1998. Oh, wow. I moved out to Silicon Valley in 1991 when I got out of grad school. And it was in the middle of a recession. So it was either California with mom or Georgia with dad. And it was summer. And so the humidity in Georgia, since I was in grad school in North Carolina. So the humidity in the South said, well, let's try California. Moved out here and I've been here since 91. Well, that's great. Yeah. That's great. So what do you do for fun out there? Clearly you've been traveling and yep. you said you went yep. to Greece. Yep. Yeah, That's, went to Greece with a girlfriend uh, for about a week. It was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, what do I do for fun? Um, well, a couple things. Um, do a lot of hiking, walking. Um, about 12 or so years ago, I got into doing triathlons. Nice. Yeah, at 47, I guess. Like, oh, sure. Why not try a triathlon? Um, so it's not... I'm not an Olympic or a, an Ironman, Iron Man, it's yeah. what they call sprint distance, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's, it's still pretty challenging. It's mm -hmm. usually a quarter mile, quarter mile to half mile swim, mm -hmm. and then a 12 mile bike and then a five mile run. Nice. Yeah. So that, that keeps me busy. Um, haven't done it in a couple of years just because of some medical issues, but mm -hmm. I, I determined that I was not going to let the medical issues make me quit doing it. So okay. I'm starting to ease back into it. Okay. And uh, so that's one thing we love to do cross country skiing. Oh, nice. We, I, I used to do downhill skiing, but we have a dog and we've, well, we're on our fourth dog, but we've had a series of dogs. And of course you can't take a dog skiing, but you can take a dog cross country skiing. Oh, that's and great. so we started doing cross country. The dog runs alongside and has a blast and we have a blast. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So where are you, are you, doing that somewhere in, in California or do you yeah. tour to or you travel to, to do that or mostly in California there's a small ski resort called Bear Valley which is more family oriented rather than Tahoe where you think about mm -hmm. Palisades which is big and you know expensive ski equipment and so forth Bear Valley is more family oriented and so they have a lot of groomed trails for cross-country skiing and then some non-groomed trails which in the summer are jeep trails and they fill oh. up with snow and so we ski on those oh that's great yeah that's wonderful um so the things that you enjoy doing now did you did you do those back in uh did you do those back in high school no what a great question <laughs> um <laughs> I was always last picked for every single sport. And <laughs> so I talked to some of my classmates like Eddie and, and Rob Thurston, and they're like, you're, you're doing triathlons? What? <laughs> Who's this? <Yeah. laughs> so uh, it, it's been really fun to finally in my 40s figure out that I can actually do these things. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. Um, so, you know, what sort of clubs or teams or things did you do back in? in uh in high school uh i edited the yearbook yes you did and i have a few questions but move okay. on okay. Go, go, go. We'll, we'll, we'll circle back to that one okay we'll circle back to that uh, but the big one was marching band that was i was passionate about that for four years that started my passion for travel 
Because of course, if you remember our freshman year, the band went to Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And so that was my first ever passport, my first ever, ever travel outside of the country and uh, just lit a spark. And remind us, you played the? Flute and piccolo. Oh, okay. Do you, do you still play? No, about five years ago, I gave my flute to a friend of mine who's a music teacher and asked her to donate it to a student in need because I realized I hadn't picked it up in 20 years. Okay. So it was just collecting dust under my nightstand. So I figured I'd pass it on to somebody else. That's great. I, uh, I don't know if you remember, I stopped playing flute in ninth grade, took mm -hmm. up the French horn because there was mm -hmm. a need. Yes. And, yes. uh, but, um, both, uh, two of my kids have played that flute. No kidding. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah. My youngest sister. So my mom had a baby when we were freshmen in college. So she's 18 years younger. My baby sister is now 42 and a doctor, but, uh, my baby sister played my flute through high yeah. school. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so let's see here. So after graduation, give us an idea. What did you do? Uh, after graduation, went straight to college uh, in Philadelphia. So right across the, the Delaware River, it was just close enough that I could come home if I wanted to and just far enough that I you know, wasn't living at home or compelled to live at home. And uh, so that was great. And I got a degree in molecular biology and then also a degree in education. Oh, so okay. uh, high school science teacher. So I did, did you, that. I did, did for a short period of time. Oh. And uh, as, as we all know, teachers are not paid very well. And oh. so it was not a good, uh, did you do that in, profession. did you do that in uh, Pennsylvania or would you? Yes. In Pennsylvania at a, at a private school in Radnor. So oh, right okay. outside of, right outside of Philadelphia. And so then I thought, well, I've got this degree in biology and I haven't really used it except to teach, of course. And so I went and worked in a lab at Penn, uh, first a lab at Temple and then a lab at Penn. And I worked there for a couple of years. Like, oh, I loved it. It was great. I was doing really cool research. It was really interesting stuff. Had a fabulous mentor. And then I realized that, okay, I either have to get an advanced degree or I have to figure out something else to do. And so the choices were medical school, which is four years plus all the post -grad. residency. Yeah. Yep. Uh, PhD, which, you know, could be even longer than four or MBA, which was two. So mm. I, <laughs> I did the math and I thought, okay, well, yeah, let's do the MBA. And uh, so I went down to North Carolina and uh, got my MBA. And then that picks us back up to in 1991 when I graduated, moved out here. That's great. <laughs> so um, was there a, a class or a teacher back at East that, um, mm -hmm. that, you know, sort of influenced you, uh, helping you get to where you are today? Yeah, definitely. Um, so in biology, it was Mr. Branich. Oh. Absolutely loved him. He was fantastic and very encouraging. And we did some great stuff in the biology class that yeah. now that I look back at it, I mean, we were testing bacteria and all kinds of cool stuff that I think, wow, that was pretty awesome for a high school. Uh, so that was one. And then, of course, all the band directors who were just, I look at it this way. Um, you hear a lot about uh, band being cut, arts being cut in school, and yet sports aren't necessarily cut. And when I think about it, those of us who were not football players, because first of all, you and I are women, but also <laughs> small yeah. um, and, you know, not football players. Band actually gave the same, I believe, the same structure camaraderie, uh, teamwork, teamwork as sports do. And I think it's super, super important. And so I really appreciate the instructors that we had in band and orchestra and the whole music department at East. Yeah. Um, that really made a big influence on me. And in fact, I have a friend whose daughter was in marching band in high school and uh, the daughter was selling cookies or something for a fundraiser. And it just took me back to our freshman year of selling chocolate and whatever else it was that we were selling in order to go on our trips. And my friend said, okay, so my daughter's selling cookies. Will you order some? And I said, no. She said, what? I said, you tell your daughter to come into the office and ask me because I can't <laughs> resist a kid, yeah. but I can resist a mom. 
Yeah. And again, you know, back to, I, we were knocking on doors saying, yep. would you like to buy some chocolate? Yeah. And so the daughter came in and sold me her cookies. And every year for four years, I bought cookies from her, but directly. Yeah. Well, and I great. just talked to the mom the other day and she still remembers that. She said, that was just so great for my daughters to hear, you know, I'm not going to step in and do it for you. Go do right. it yourself. Yeah. And so a lot of independence. So you asked about teachers and we're talking about band, but there was so much more. It wasn't just the music. It was everything around that whole program. Yeah. So I suspect that in, in regards to the next question, uh, who are you still in touch with from East? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Gotta be. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm going to leave a bunch of bandmates. Yeah. Yes, a bunch of bandmates. I'm going to leave a bunch of people out. So apologies well, I to mean... the folks I leave out. Uh, Gary Snegroff and I both attended each other's weddings. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, Charlene Sue, uh, Janet Long, now Latang, one of my best friends from junior high school. And when we get together, it's like no time has passed at all, even though we've taken very different trajectories in our lives. It's so cool to, to sync up. Uh, Eddie Denkin. Rob Thurston, probably my oldest friend. We were in second grade together at Johnson wow. School. Yeah. So what, 1969, I think. Wow. Yeah. God, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I mentioned Eddie, mm -hmm. uh, Reggie Wu. Oh. Uh, gosh, Debbie Yarish. Yeah. Talked to her quite a bit. Um, follow her travels through Europe. And I've yeah. seen her a couple of times. Uh, so that's kind of the, the core, the main yeah. ones, but then there are tons of other people, Jeff Lyons and, and, and have great... you sort of connected that way through Facebook or through some other social media? I, I mean, this is just so foreign to us, right? Yeah, it was, I know. You picked up the phone, you picked up the pen and now you wrote you a know, letter. Yeah. Yeah. Cause um, long distance was way too expensive in college to be oh my God. running, running yeah. up that there, bill. Right. There were certain hours that <laughs> yes, you would yes. wait after 11. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. you had your sprint number, which was 12 numbers that you had to dial in before you dialed the number. I remember all of that. And now it's just like, Oh, you pick up the cell phone and you call somebody. Yep. It's Boom. no big deal. Yeah. Or here we are talking live with video. I know it, it's crazy. <laughs> um, most of them in answer to your question, most of them, yes, through Facebook. Um, but Gary and I have been in touch Kind of all along, same with Charlene, uh, Debbie to a lesser, Debbie and I talk more because of Facebook, but we right. were always in touch. Janet, same thing. Yeah. So some of the, the core people, the people I was closest to in high school, we've always been in touch, although, you know, not as much as you'd like, mm -hmm. but still always kind of knew where each other were and stuff like that. Um, and then a lot of people through Facebook, which has been so cool. To yeah. just resurrect those relationships like you. I wouldn't have known where you were and then found you on Facebook. And it's really cool to see what yeah. people are up to. Yeah, it's it's I mean, that's sort of what got me um, excited about doing this and talking yeah. to our classmates is I would see someone posting on Facebook and I'd be like, I need to more, I need to know more. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. You, you, you go in and you type on a message or whatever, and they type back. It, it, it's just the back and forth is just, it's just not the same as it's a conversation. So my not. kids, that's, it's like, what, pick oh, up the phone. Yeah. What? yeah. <laughs> I know. Walk over to somebody's house and knock on the door. Are you kidding yes. me? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So did you have a, a high school sweetheart? I had a few. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Are we uh, naming names? Uh, oh, you can if you'd like. Okay. Um, uh, you didn't marry your high school sweetheart. I did not. Okay. I did not. Uh, yeah. Paul Woodson. Oh, uh, yes, Paul. And I were sweethearts in, yeah. in high school. Um, I went to my junior prom with Paul. Oh. I had a huge crush on Dave Bannett. <laughs> That, uh, that never went anywhere. Um, <laughs> um, but you married your love. <laughs> I did marry my love. Yes. I met my love after I moved to California. I like how we move on from this, con from yeah. this question. Um, yes. I, when I moved out to California in 91, I was working for a biotech company. And I went to a biotech conference at... Um, uh, at Moscone Center, which is the conference center in San Francisco. And I walked over to a booth of one of the companies that we worked with. And uh, I knew somebody there and he introduced me to his, uh, his employee, Warner. 
And uh, Warner and I just started talking and found out that we lived about half a block apart in Mountain View. So it was just one of these sort of like, oh, come over for coffee. Actually, he would come over. I don't remember if it was Wednesdays or Thursdays, but he'd come over and watch Seinfeld every week. Oh, and that was okay. the big thing. He'd come and he'd hang out at my apartment and we'd watch Seinfeld. And uh, one day, and all platonic. And then one day a friend was visiting me and my phone rang at 10 o'clock at night or 9.30 or something. And I answer the phone and my friend's husband hears me go, yeah, no, no, I've got company. Okay, bye. And he says, well, who was that? And I said, oh, that's just my friend Warner. He just wanted to know if I wanted to go for ice cream. And Jeff looks me in the eye and he says, Deborah, guys don't eat ice cream at 9.30. He likes you. <laughs> and that was kind of one of these aha moments where the light bulb went on. I'm like, oh yeah, I kind of like him too. <laughs> oh. And we've been married for 28 years. Oh, that's wonderful. That's a great story. Yeah. That's a great story. No children. No children. No nope. right. four-legged children. Four-legged children. That's yes. great. What yes. kind of uh we um we've been rescuing older golden retrievers. Oh wow. So uh we got a golden retriever puppy back in ninety-nine and she lived to be almost fifteen. She mm -hmm. was just fantastic, our our first and only baby. And after she died, I realized that we, without children, so we're not saving for college or anything else, we can bring on an older dog because we can take them to the vet and take care of them if some other family couldn't afford to anymore because hmm. they've gotten older. And I like the idea of giving an older dog a second mm -hmm. chance. And so we adopted a dog by the name of Buddy. Mm -hmm. And Buddy was 123 pounds. His fighting weight was 81. So he was oh. 40 pounds overweight. Oh, dear. So we adopted him and through walks and diet and everything, we got him back to his fighting weight and he became quite the athlete. And uh, when we lost him, just probably two months later, we got another one. His name is Huey. And uh, Huey was a little bit of a problem child and had been adopted and then returned to foster. Yeah. And uh, we just gave him the love and the patience and he turned out to be the best dog. He's, he's my, my buddy. And then uh, soon after we lost him, we've now adopted Sadie. And Sadie came from a puppy farm. So Sadie had pretty much been in a cage Aww. having puppies for years. Aww. And so she doesn't know any commands. She mm. doesn't have any social skills. She's the sweetest, sweetest thing. And so we're just, you know, really patiently, slowly teaching her sit and come and teaching her that it's okay to be pet. And she doesn't have to be scared of people. And she's turning out to be such a love. So that turned out to kind of be my passion is uh, rescuing older dogs. Oh, and great. so I, I used to joke that, you know, when I retired, I was going to buy a bunch of land and rescue all the dogs, but I haven't <laughs> done that yet. But that but might be on your possible. list. It That's might be right. on my list. That's right. So is there anybody you were, you were tight with that you, you lost touch with? Um, oh, wow. Um, hmm. I don't think so. I think all the people that I was really tight with, um, either through staying in touch or through Facebook or through staying in touch through mutual friends, I think yeah. we're still in touch. That's with. good. It's, it was a really... I tell people that we went to school and we had 800 classmates and they're like, yeah. are you kidding me? I mean, a lot of my friends, their whole high school was 200 people. Right. And so 800 kids, you mean in your class? I'm like, yeah, in yeah. your class. And yet when you think back on it, it was a really special group of people. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there was some Reggie, who's a rock star and mm -hmm. you her a doctor and mm -hmm. I'm in Silicon Valley and Gary's in Hollywood. And it's like, we just had this really cool, really diverse group of people that um, it, it's always fun to catch up with. It's like it no is. time has gone by. I mean, I feel like, yeah. you know, you and I could be just sitting in the lunchroom talking. Yeah. <laughs> At 1030 in the morning, third period. Yes. Well, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> um, so standout memories from high school, either highs or lows, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I remember um, it was kind of, I think we were, reminiscing with Eric we took a trip one of the band trips went I think we went to uh up to Canada or to mm -hmm. some right yeah yeah we went somewhere in Canada yeah so uh so what what's what are what were some of your highs or lows from I was just talking about one the other day again speaking of band 
um, the girlfriend that I went to Greece with, her son is 15 and he was on a high school trip. And that's why we were in Greece. Parents were not allowed on the trip, but she flew over there. And so she and I were kind of hanging out while he was doing his trip. And she was talking about chaperones and making sure that the kids stay in their rooms and stay out of trouble. And I remember on one of the band trips, uh, I think it was somewhere in Pennsylvania. I just remember, and there was nothing nefarious, right? There was no drinking or drugs or sex or anything. It was just fun to sneak other members into other band members into our rooms and just kind of like good, fle good fun mischief. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's a big highlight. Uh, so much about band is, is a huge highlight. Another one that really, really sticks with me is, um, do you remember when we did the music man that when the, uh, drama, drama, drama department yeah. did the music man? What year was so that? Was that it, which was, I think it was our senior year. Senior year. Okay. I think so. And so at the end of the music, man, all the kids learn how to play the instruments after all. And so what the drama department did is got the marching band and we snuck into the back. Remember that huge auditorium? Yes. Such yes. a nice auditorium. And so we snuck into the back and we were standing in the back really, really quietly. And then just as they started playing 76 trombones, as the pit orchestra started playing, we all started yes. playing and walked down the aisle. Yeah. And it still gives me chills thinking about it because the audience was just like, what, what was happening? Yeah. And so, um, my husband and I last year flew out to New York City to see the music band on Broadway oh, because great. I just I just had to do it. It was just yeah. such a cool high school memory. And the three or four people around us, all of them had had some connection to the music band in high school or, you know, summer camp or whatever it was. We were all there reliving our and we were all in our 60s and we we're all yeah. reliving our high school years. Yeah. Oh, that's great. It was awesome. It was really I fun. I forgot about that, but now that you uh, now that you remind me, I'm like, yes, yeah, so it was it was very impactful. It yeah, was, yeah, it really was. Cool a moment. lot of fun. Um, is there anything that you wish classmates back then knew about you then, or something you want to share that they wouldn't have known that about you now? Oh wow. Um. Hmm. I don't think so. Okay. No, I, I think, we, yeah, I, I can't think of anything that's. You are an open book. <laughs> I am an open book. Yes, I am. <laughs> I guess and... the only thing is that I did have the potential to be an athlete after all. That, yeah. That'd be the one thing because yeah, I certainly was not athletic in high school at all. I did whatever I could to avoid gym class. Uh, uh, I remember in junior high school, um, oh, Michelle Kasparian, who, she's another mm. one that I'm still in touch with. She was my uh, freshman year college roommate, actually. Oh, wow. Um, so Michelle and I were, she was picked to be the captain of a volleyball team in gym class in junior high school at Beck. And so she picked all her friends, all of us non-athletes. And so we, you know, were just trounced every single game. And so here I go from being one of the ones, one of the uh rejects who was on this <laughs> reject volleyball kind of, team yeah to, yeah to uh yeah it's it's 10 a.m and I just did triathlon what have you done with your Saturday so uh, it's kind of cool that I had it in me and didn't know it at the time there we go so have you been back in the building uh mm -hmm. and when did you go back why did you go back and how'd you feel about it I have not been back in the building. Oh, I really okay. wanted to go back in the building in about 2013 when I was out in Philadelphia. And I actually called and asked about it. And they said that they weren't letting anybody in. So I was not able to go in, which broke my heart. I really wanted to go in and see it and yeah. see exactly what you asked. How did I feel about it? How was it yeah. to be back there? Yeah. Have yeah. you been in? I have not been in, but I uh, have, uh, when we'd go back to visit my folks, as each kid kind of got to the point where they um, could, you know, we're starting driving. I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, this is the parking lot I learned to drive in. Mm -hmm. We're going to yeah. learn to drive in this parking lot. Yeah. And so yeah. the kids have, have been this. I've been to the outside and haven't been in. Okay. I know Jeff Lyons has been in because he has a kid who graduated yeah. from East. Yeah. So he had that in. He was able to. Yeah. Uh, Joanne, uh, Joanne oh, Gay yeah. Campbell as well. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And Scott, you know, their kids yep. went there I've, as well. Yep. I've seen both of them. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, they are moving out to LA area because oh, that's really? where their their oldest is living. So I think oh, they're okay. heading out 
uh, is it this year or next year? Oh, so, oh my yeah. gosh. So on the same side of the, the country as you. Yeah, yeah. So um, we're back in 1980. Okay. And you've just graduated and you're mm-hmm. looking down the road 40 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, is <laughs> where you are now where you thought you'd be? Oh my God, so far, so far apart. You can't even believe it. I wanted to be a veterinarian. That's why I majored in biology. Um, That's why I chose the university I chose. I worked in a veterinary hospital Mm. and then I got a D in organic chemistry and (laughs) and my GPA just plummeted. (laughs) And so that dream went out the window. But that turned out to be just fine. The the steps that I've taken to get where I am are very strange and bizarre and wonderful. And I am really happy at where I am now, but it's so different from where I thought I'd be completely different. You know, when you're eight, when you're, I guess we were 17 and you have this plan, I'm going to graduate from college and then I'm going to get married and then I'm going to go to graduate school and then I'm going to have 2.2 2.2 children and and you know, all by the time I'm 26 or something yeah. and oh my god in the year 2000 we're going to be 37 that's so old oh my gosh so um yeah I I'm totally diametrically opposed from where I thought I'd be except for the rescuing dogs so I still have you yeah. know my hand in something with animals but it's just very very different oh that's funny um so advice that you'd give your 18 year old self. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. okay. Uh, let's see. Be open to anything that comes along. Don't think that the plan you have made for yourself is the plan that you're going to follow. So be open to whatever opportunities come along. That's one. Um, and then romantically, um, <laughs> uh, also be open. Because, you know, I think about who I was with in college and how very different my life would be if I had stayed with, uh, I was serious with two guys in college um, and sequentially, not simultaneously. <laughs> and, <laughs> and if I think of, think back to what, you know, life would be if I had stayed there, um, it'd just be completely different. Um, yeah. The other thing, a third thing, I guess, is uh, trust yourself and have confidence in yourself because I don't know how confident I was in myself at the time at age, you know, 17. I don't know how many of us were. I'm not sure. I don't think many of us were. And so it's, you know, trust, trust your gut, trust yourself, trust that you're going to be fine. Yeah. Good advice. Good advice. So go back to, I'm calling this the fast and furious finish here. Um, so did you have a favorite tv show or movie or book from the, our high school days or one of each i don't know um, sorry i'm not being very fast and furious am i no, that's okay. uh, <laughs> um I don't remember watching a lot of TV. I know I did, but I don't remember what I watched. How about a favorite Uh, musical group or an artist or a genre that you enjoyed? Oh, that's an interesting question because here's the thing. I was into more pop music Mm -hmm. in high school, but every time a Led Zeppelin song comes on the radio (laughs) now, I know every single word and I have no idea how I know every (laughs) single word but I'm singing in my car and just digging it. And I have, I didn't listen to Led Zeppelin in high school, but I know all the songs now. So I don't know how that happened. I guess just repetition or something. Uh, So no, I didn't have a specific uh, favorite group in high school. I guess I I did like Santana. Hmm. Um, So I remember that. Um, I remember Steve Ebner telling me one time, the world moves to the beat of a Santana song. Like, yeah, that's pretty cool. If you walk down the street, watch people and sing a Santana song in your head. And yeah, the world kind of meets, moves to that beat. <laughs> um, and then movies. I loved going to the movies, but I didn't have a, a favorite that I w- would watch over and over again. Like mm. So did you have a favorite place to eat or hang out? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or was that, when was the last uh, time you were there? If it oh still exists. God. Oh my God. I don't even know if it still exists, but um if you remember in senior year of high school, if you had all the, if you had enough credits, you didn't, because of the overcrowding, you could leave at one o'clock. 
right. and, and be done with your day. And so uh, Dave Bannett and Alan Levinson and I would oh. go to Friendly's all the oh. time for lunch. Oh. And so, yeah, I, I love doing that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. I don't even know if Friendly's is still there. I have no idea. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to have to shift this for a second. Okay. I'm trying not to spill my water on my I electronics. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So, all righty. <laughs> So here we are. Oh my oh. gosh. Oh my Here's gosh. Your photos. Yeah. So do you like, did you like your high school photo and did you like your quote or do you still? I can't read what my quote says. I think I know what it was, but it is treasures most, uh, I'm going to butcher this. Les du ultra musk looks like musketeers. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I liked my photo. I was friendly with the photographer. And so he did a really, really excellent job of getting rid of zits. So, <laughs> as a favor to me, he's like, here's what your picture looked like. And here's what I did with it. Um, so yes, I did like my photo. I still like that photo. Um, and yes, the quote is about the other two musketeers and Charlene, Sue, Gary Snegroff, and I called ourselves the three musketeers and uh, still love them both. Okay. so. Uh, so a couple of questions here. So uh, you'll know the answer to this is what's okay. the name of our high school yearbook <laughs> and why is that the name and uh, what does it mean? It's Eidolon and I have no flipping clue. Okay. So it, it's from the Greek. So oh, you were okay. just in Greece, uh, yeah. meaning apparition or phantom or an okay. ideal or idealized figure. Okay. So that's interesting. Okay. So even yeah. though you, you, you as our editor, so I, I was with, with both Eddie and Jeff, who I've already talked to, I'm like, yeah. what's with that? And everybody's yeah. like, they're both like, oh, ask, ask Deborah, ask Deborah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So I'm asking you and the answer is you don't know I anymore. No <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you did the research. Thank you. <laughs> and so, and the other thing is that we, we all came to the conclusion is what, what's, what was with the Western theme and and then the thing that cracks me up is that you, you know, there's a gun on every page and I'm like, yeah. oh my God, just the concept of a gun today, know, right? you, you'd have gotten thrown out. So yeah. I, I'm just sort of curious, how did the Western, do you remember how the Western theme or this, this whole thing I came up? Do you don't any idea? recall how the Western theme came about. Um, I know the pages are that color because it's kind of going with the Western theme, like right. Bonanza burning the map kind of right. thing. Mm -hmm. Um, the gun on every page, yeah, that would never fly now. Would it? No. But it was, uh, if you look at it, it's one of those prop guns, you know, where you shoot yeah. it and it says bang. Yeah, yeah. And so that was the intention. But wow, looking back, there's no way that we could do that now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so the, the, the the big unanswered question is how did we end up with a Western thing? Uh, no, so I don't so remember. we'll, okay, I'm going to continue to ask because uh, I, yeah. I imagine several of the people we'll, we'll talk to will have been on the yearbook and maybe somebody yeah. will remember that meeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, uh, anything else you want to tell the, the viewing audience uh, while we have the chance? Uh, yeah, it's going to sound a little sappy. Okay. But I think we had a great, great growing up experience. Yeah. I think at the time, I don't know what it's like now, but at the time, Cherry Hill was just an idyllic place to be. Cherry Hill in the 70s was mm -hmm. an idyllic place to be. It certainly had its problems, but not, not a lot of problems. Uh, but it was just a really, really nice place to grow up. I remember getting on my bike and just riding forever. And, you know, th they always joke about, you know, come home when the streetlights come on. And that yeah. was kind of the way we grew up. And yeah. it was, it was really nice. So it sounds a little sappy, but I really enjoyed my time. Somebody was asking the other day, would you do high school all over again? And yeah, yeah, I was small and I got picked on sometimes and I was really nerdy and I was in the band and I wasn't one of the popular kids. But again, going back to having 800 kids in our class, there were, there were places everybody fit. Everybody yeah. could find a place to fit. Uh, so yeah, I, I would do it again. I think it was overall a positive experience. Yeah, me too. I it's funny when you talk to friends throughout the years and the various you know episodes of your life, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, people are like, oh God, they hated high school. They yeah. Hated that. And I'm like, yeah. I did not. I did not. I did not. Which is, again, uh, I'm really curious as to find out what happens to what has happened to our classmates and yeah, yeah. see where they are. And mm-hmm. that's why we're doing this podcast. And well, I just want to thank, thank you for you. doing it. No, this I just want to so thank great. you for, for getting on the, on the zoom with me today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks for joining me on. It's been how long the podcast about Cherry Hill high school, East students from the late 1970s and the early eighties, a shout out to my cousin, Brad Corbett, whose podcast, We Weren't Friends in High School, inspired me to do this podcast and whose advice and encouragement have been so helpful. Thanks also to my husband, Randy Cockdale, who read all the fine print on the podcast hosting website so I wouldn't have to. And thanks to Jeff Lyons, content consultant and guinea pig, and to Deborah Smead, also content consultant. And thank you to all our classmates who are listening in. See you next week.